Okay, um, welcome once again. And uh, I have faith that you're enjoying my class. Good. According to my faith, uh, that you're happy sitting here in this class. Okay, let's uh, look at what else Jesus said about faith and did with regard to faith. We saw how he encouraged people, even when they were struggling to have faith in God. Now, the next important thing that we see here is that sometimes, even when people did not have faith, God did a miracle. So why do you think God does a miracle even when people don't have faith? Why does God do a miracle? See, God, God wants us to have faith. Without faith, miracle cannot happen. Because Jesus even rebuked his disciples for the lack of faith. But sometimes he did the miracle when there was no faith. Why does he do that? Now, if you ask for examples, examples would be there was a paralyzed man at the pool of uh, Bethesda, and uh, he never believed that Jesus can do a miracle. So when Jesus came, started talking to him, he was simply narrating to him the process of getting healed. An angel will come, it will stir the water. The first person who gets inside will be healed. But here is this man, you know, uh, some 38, 39 years long, long, he's been waiting by the pool and never been healed. And when Jesus is coming and speaking to him, he still doesn't express his faith. He doesn't say, Jesus, I know you can heal me, nothing. But Jesus still ministers healing to him. And he gets healed, the paralyzed man. Now, uh, there are other instances like Martha and Mary. They don't believe that Jesus can raise up Lazarus now. But did Jesus raise Lazarus? Yes, he raised not because there was faith, because there was no faith, actually. But still, Jesus raised Lazarus. Um, there was a lady from nine whose son had died. She's crying. Jesus looks at her. He has compassion on her. And uh, he raises up her son. Okay. Even that lady in that moment, it's not like she believed. But two resurrections. And, you know, one very major healing took place without faith. So why does God do this? Why does he even minister um, his power to people who may not believe? What is the reason? Okay, uh, Paramita says he wanted to, he wants us to have faith. So he does miracles even when someone has no faith oh, okay interesting so uh, he wants others to have faith so he does a miracle even when somebody doesn't have faith okay fine any other reason why god does miracles even when there is no faith we can see the Okay, when we see the miracle, we glorify the Father. Okay. Yeah. Any other reason why God is doing a miracle? Even when there is no faith. Okay, so Shekhar says, uh, love and compassion. God's love and compassion. All right. So that's true. It's the nature of God. Our God is a gracious God. Okay. Uh, the Bible says that he makes the sun to rise on the righteous as well as the wicked. You know, he, uh, it rains on both the righteous and the wicked. Why? Because he's gracious. He's good. He's merciful. He's compassionate. So, the nature of God is such that there are times when God just wants to step in 
and release a miracle because of the goodness of his heart. There may be no faith associated with it. But you think about Lazarus. The Bible says Jesus wept. He was really moved by the situation that had happened to a family. That he went ahead, he did the miracle. He saw that woman who lost her son. He was moved with compassion. And he did the miracle. So we serve a good God. So even sometimes when people don't have faith, because he is so good, he does the miracle. Okay, He releases the healing. So without faith in exceptional situations, miracles can happen. Answers can come because of God's goodness. Okay, so that's how we um, understand it. And God can even touch people powerfully. Maybe somebody comes to a meeting uh, to find fault with it or somebody comes to a meeting to create trouble and that person gets healed and they are amazed. You know, how can God do this? You know, That person is not a good person. But who are we to uh, judge? God is the one who knows people, knows their hearts and he decides what he wants to do for the people and it's because of God's goodness that he moves sovereignly and releases miracles in people's lives. Now coming to uh, one more insight, it is possible for us to uh, stand in faith for somebody else. In the Bible, you have many such situations. For example, that centurion. He did not want healing. Who needed the healing? His servant. But who went? The centurion. He goes and says, Jesus, my servant is sick. Heal him. Now, Jairus. His daughter is sick. So, Jairus goes. There is another uh, incident where there are four friends they take their paralyzed friend. They have faith that their friend can be healed. But God heals that paralyzed man because of the faith of those four people. So even today, when we trust God for somebody else, maybe we are believing God for you know a brother, a sister, a father, a mother, a son, a daughter, right? a husband, wife, could be anybody or our friends. There are some friends of us who need um, uh, God to work in their lives. On their behalf, we can go to Jesus with our faith. And God can do a miracle for them. It works even in that way. Okay, So um, it's very, very valuable. We can have faith for others. Now we also see that Jesus was very angry or upset unhappy when people did not have faith so every time what was you know one of the things that really upset him lack of faith so we observe um, jesus rebuking his disciples so in uh, matthew 8 i already said uh, that he rebuked the disciples when he woke up and he told them why are you fearful O oh, you of little faith so he was amazed because he had lived with them. He had walked with them. They had seen Jesus every day. And when the storm came, they got scared. Instead of trusting that God can do a miracle. And so he tells them, why were you afraid? Oh, you of little faith. It's a way of, you know, just uh, um, giving them a rebuke. Not just there, but even Peter. So when Peter fell, what did Jesus tell him? Oh, you of little faith. Why did you doubt? So he was not happy that uh, he, you know, uh, Peter didn't have faith. Now move on. In uh, Matthew 16, again, there is an incident where he makes the same comment. He says, oh, you of little faith, why do you reason among yourselves? Because you have brought no bread. So that was a time when they needed a miracle from Jesus, you know, the, uh, the multiplying of food. At that time when people were quite logical, it was that they were afraid there is uh, not sufficient food for everyone. But in a crisis, what does it tell us? God expects us to have faith. So especially in a crisis, 
we have to look to god and say god yes the situation is really bad but we know you can do something about it and that is faith but when we get worried when we um, you know uh, sort of show our um, anxiety obviously it's almost like we can hear jesus tell us oh you of little faith why did you doubt why were you afraid okay instead of that god wants us to have faith even in the midst of a crisis situation now in matthew chapter 17 there is an incident when there is a child that is demon possessed and uh, that child is brought to jesus's disciples the disciples try to cast the demon out but they are not successful okay and uh, they bring this matter to jesus and they tell jesus this child is demon possessed and jesus immediately cast the demon out however one thing that he tells his disciples in matthew chapter 17 and verse 17 is oh faithless and perverse generation how long shall i be with you how long shall i bear with you bring him here to me so jesus is rebuking them but it shows god's displeasure to a great extent because he says oh faithless and um perverse generation they were only faithless but why did jesus say perverse ke okay, perverse means uh, sort of um, you know where, when your character is corrupt corrupted uh, morally corrupted that is the meaning of the word perverse so jesus is associating unbelief with perversity so it's really huge the way god is looking at unbelief it just goes to tell us that god does not like unbelief at all he loves faith but he hates unbelief so he's rebuking his disciples and he's saying oh faithless and perverse generation how long shall i be with you how much shall i teach you how much shall i show you and still there is unbelief in the hearts of the disciples so faith is very important to god and it's very important for god to work in our lives at the same time unbelief really hinders the work of god god does not like unbelief and uh, in the last section here we see that there are some places where jesus went and the bible says he could not do many miracles because of their unbelief okay so if we want to think of look at it this way if we want to stop god what should we do don't believe that's all god wants to do god can do but you don't want him to um show his glory unbelief will stop it even if god wants to move powerfully in our midst if there is no faith the bible says jesus could not do how can jesus not be able to do he can always do right but the bible specifically says in matthew 13 and mark 6 jesus could not do many miracles because of their unbelief now think about the opposite if there was faith then what would uh, the author have written jesus did many miracles because of their faith the same thing is applicable to us today when we don't carry faith as individuals or let's say as a community a church community or now you know we are a student community if there is faith many miracles will take place but if we carry unbelief even though god can do it's almost like um you know uh, sorry to use this illustration but just to make us understand i'm using it i don't mean that uh, you know we can chain god or anything like that because he's almighty god but it's as if unbelief can sort of put handcuffs god wants to do but he cannot do why because unbelief is holding god back and it's a big deal 
to understand this that with our faith god can move but with our unbelief we can actually stop god okay uh, and uh, that is quite dangerous so we have to always remember to um, grow in our faith and to trust god to move in our midst so these are some things key things that we notice about um, jesus and how he dealt with faith okay um so the important thing that comes out of uh, our chapter 3 is we need to have faith okay and according to our faith how much faith we carry based on that we can see god work in our lives and guard your heart against unbelief so i'll just give you one small example from my life uh, so whenever we used to have exams right back in college and all it was quite scary especially like my first year of college um the subjects were very difficult and um when the final exam came uh like students were so scared that some were falling sick and all you know crazy things were happening uh, so with a lot of um focus commitment we had prepared for the exams and you would go for the exams but you know how it is before you go into the exam hall there'll be lot of students talking they'll hold their books and they'll be reading and then they'll say hey did you read this question did you read that question uh, this has this answer and come let's revise the long answer so i in the beginning i used to listen to them then i thought you know what the little mustard seed faith which is in my heart is flying away like a bird so i don't want to stand with any of these students i'll just go separately just guard my heart guard my faith and uh, answer what i know i'm not going to be bothered by you know all this unbelief conversations also used to happen things like oh that subject that teacher didn't teach well so i don't think we'll be able to answer properly uh, or we don't know uh, for this we don't have the book so if this question comes you won't be able to write it what is all this unbelief right so i would think to myself i have to guard my heart i don't want to listen to any unbelief getting into my ears so just go to a corner guard my faith right so that i can go into the hall write my exam in faith and come out okay and it always worked it's best sometimes not to listen to words of unbelief uh, always keep your faith high okay all uh, look for environments of faith be planted in an environment of faith speak faith okay encourage faith if there's unbelief try to stay away from it because we know what can limit god it's our unbelief but what can allow god to work in our lives it's faith right so um faith and unbelief there's this whole dynamics that happens but as individuals you know, to be able to uh determine i have to live in such a way every day that i need to get faith stay away from unbelief all right so it helps and uh, just i'm just giving you one small example for, of the exams but uh, i think in everything else in life also uh, it's so helpful to be in an environment of faith okay now let's move on let's read a little bit more about faith and uh, regarding jesus's teaching about faith um chapter 4 here where jesus taught specifically concerning faith uh what are some key lessons that you can learn from the teachings of jesus okay so before we get into that there is a small section which says truth versus facts and what we want to explain here is that there are facts around us for example when in matthew chapter 8 there was a storm and the disciples were on the boat what are the facts there is a storm the boat is shaking the water is coming in okay uh, it's very windy the disciples are scared these are all the facts 
so we cannot deny the facts this is the reality natural reality but what is the truth truth is the spiritual truth the spiritual truth is god can stop the winds god can calm the storm that is the truth so we put our faith in the truth not necessarily in the facts okay so when we live in this way we are not denying the facts you know sometimes uh, we see people who are sick or even in our own bodies we experience some some symptoms and when we put our faith in god that god will heal us the question comes to our minds hey i'm saying by the stripes of jesus i'm healed but i'm sneezing you know i'm uh, i have a cough i have a cold i have a pain uh, and uh, how is it possible because the facts do exist what are the facts there are symptoms but what is the truth by the stripes of jesus i was healed there is a greater spiritual reality though circumstances reveal the facts there is a truth that we must put our faith in so that's how we build our faith we are not saying that uh, you know i i don't have fever i have fever or i don't have any pain i may have pain so it's not about denying facts faith is not about denying facts faith is about proclaiming the truth of god's word now facts would be let's say if somebody uh, is uh, in a poverty situation oh we don't have food we don't have shelter we don't have clothes we don't have money to pay the bills yeah these are facts but what is the truth jehovah jaira the lord is my provider he provided for those thousands of people in the wilderness he can provide for me right every day fresh food fresh manna he provided he can provide for me so we do not deny the facts the natural facts but we put our faith in the greater spiritual reality so maybe today we may have a dream in our hearts in our minds and we're thinking i know that god is going to make me uh, uh, lead a church or uh, lead an organization 5 years from from now 10 years from now who knows you know maybe god is going to establish help me establish a bible college we don't know right but if god has put that dream in our hearts we can look at ourselves today and say but i don't know i have not you know um uh, completed my theology course but i have not got any opportunity to preach i have not you can look at all the facts and make that a big deal or you can look at the truth that when god said he will bless me he will bless me yes right now i may not know everything but i'm trying i'm working hard right so we work through these facts but we put our trust and our faith in the truth of god's word so let's remember this okay uh, don't deny facts denying facts is not faith because sometimes people teach that people say uh, you just say uh, i'm fine you may actually have pain but you're saying no i'm okay i'm fine i don't have any pain i don't have any pain you know but actually you do have pain so it's not about denying the facts it's about relying on the greater spiritual reality or the truth of god's word now moving on to um uh, some some things that we can learn from the teachings of jesus so when we look at the facts of life uh you know if if we are not careful we can make the facts as our doctrine or our teaching for example let's uh, let's say that uh, if i have prayed for people okay just imagine with me maybe i prayed for 10 people okay and uh, all the 10 people died i'm just saying if i prayed for 10 people and all the 10 people died i can come and i can teach all of you and say you know what sometimes prayer works sometimes prayer doesn't work sometimes even if we pray people don't get healed people um, you know yeah the bible says jesus died on the cross but it doesn't work i can come and teach you things like this because i am coming from 
my experience. I'm coming from facts. Okay? But we have to remember that we must never make the facts uh, uh, the reality because now my experience can always change. Now tomorrow, if I go and I pray for another 10 people, all of them in critical situations, all 10 of them get healed. Then what, what, what should I do? I'll change my teaching. First I said, if you pray also people don't get healed. Now they all got healed. So I'll go and teach. If you pray, people get healed. Right? People get blessed. So we don't preach our experience. Okay, are you all understanding what I'm saying? Because what happens? Experience can change. I can have a good experience one day. I can have a bad experience another day. And there can be many reasons why, you know, people may not have got healed. Maybe I didn't have faith in my heart. Maybe they didn't have faith in their hearts. Maybe it wasn't, uh, you know, um, uh, or something that they needed to repent for. There could be a thousand reasons why the person did not get healed. But if I go around preaching my experience, then I'm not preaching the word of God. Because no matter what my experience is on any given day, the truth of God's word says, Jesus died on the cross. He carried our sorrows. He carried our griefs. He uh, carried our sicknesses. By his stripes, we are healed. That is the reality. The truth of God's word always remains the same. So when we preach, we must preach the truth of God's word and not our experiences. Because people should put their faith in the truth, not in our experiences. Okay, uh, and, and that is something for us to remember. So we don't, we don't have the right to modify the truth based on our experiences. Now, let's move on, look at some of the teachings that we find from Jesus. So the first insight for us is that the power or the force behind the mustard seed sized faith is the infinite God himself. So it was Jesus who said in um, Matthew chapter 17 and verse 20, because of your unbelief, I say to you, if, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move and nothing will be impossible for you. And again, in another passage, Mark 9, he says, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. So in these passages, we understand that Jesus said, when we have faith, all things are possible. If you believe, all things are possible. Isn't it? Now, we may only depend on the faith aspect. Because it says here, Jesus said that if you believe, you are going to see the mountains moved. But the point we are making is, why is faith powerful? Faith is powerful because of the God behind the faith. Do you understand? Because of the God behind the faith. And that is what makes our faith powerful. So when we believe that a mountain will be moved, or if we believe, right, that we are going to be blessed because of the truth of God's word behind uh, that faith, the miracle takes place. Now, if we don't understand this reality, what happens is people may start using faith for the sake of faith. I'll just give you one uh, example. You know, There are times when people say things like, um, yes, we are blessed because of the cross. If you have faith, you can have anything. Right? So, uh, I will literally ask for anything. You know, I want a billion dollars and I want a Mercedes Benz and I want this and I want that. Why? If you believe, if you have faith in your heart, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Jesus said, right? So, I can just have faith in faith. But that's not how it is supposed to be. Yes, faith will work. People may even receive from their faith. You know, all these, these things outside of God's purpose. People may even receive it. But what was Jesus trying to say? 
the force will work or the power of faith will work but faith must be anchored in god faith is powerful because of god if we miss out god and his purpose and we are just using faith okay you say it you get it you claim it you believe it you receive it so many things happen in the christian world because people are using this concept of faith and saying it will work it has to work they are right it has to work but why is faith powerful we must never detach the infinite god behind this faith which works so if we just separate and say god we don't want you we don't want your will we don't want your purpose just help us have faith give us faith faith is enough we will use faith and get whatever we want that's not the right way to express our faith in god and we must be careful about that so even though jesus said that if you can believe all things are possible to him who believes why do we believe so that we can live according to the purposes of god so that we can establish the things that god wants established in his kingdom so separating faith from the infinite god is not the right thing to do okay now let's move on let's learn some more uh, regarding faith we will receive according to our faith now this is um, very it can be very encouraging or it can be very discouraging i'll tell you why so there are two passages in our uh, notes here it says in matthew 8 jesus said to the centurion go your way and as you have believed so let it be done for you and the servant was healed that same hour so what did the centurion believe he believed if jesus says one word right now the miracle can take place and jesus says you go according to what you have believed you believed that your servant can be healed right now in the same way the servant will be healed and it happened uh, in matthew 9 uh, for a blind man he says according to your faith let it be to you so it's again very encouraging because the blind man believed that he can see right so when we uh, have faith in god for a miracle those miracles take place but imagine if we don't have sufficient faith now if the blind man his faith was yeah jesus can heal but you know it's so complicated uh, maybe conjunctivitis jesus can heal but blindness i don't know uh, maybe he can heal little bit or i'll get i sight in only one eye and if jesus had said okay according to your faith and he gets only one eye i sight the other he doesn't get i sight why because his faith was small okay so it works both ways it's wonderful that jesus said according to your faith let it be done for you if our faith is big then all that we are expecting from god takes place in our lives but if our faith is small we can't blame god right because god is saying you are believing only so much i want to give you so much but you want to believe only little bit so then according to your faith let it be done for you so it's a question that we can ask ourselves how big is my faith or uh, how much can i believe uh, god what am i expecting god to do for me okay so i'll just give you one nice uh, example here this was 2020 when covid hit and um, uh 2020 i think beginning of the year somewhere around march we had on campus students here in uh, the same uh, bible college campus and we had to send them back home because covid right they have to go back home so we had to close off our uh, um, residential program and then on zoom we continued the classes for one semester and completed it but the next semester again there was lockdown nobody expected locked down for so many months but think about this you know god is so amazing like pastor came up with this idea why don't we open it out to the um, uh, global community we can get students from all over the world so let's have online bible college okay uh, but when he first told us this he told us uh, let us believe 
uh, got to give us 200 students. Now you can think about this. Just now we've closed, finished one semester on Zoom, and we are moving into online Bible college, and pastors giving us like the target 200 students. Where in the world, sitting at home, you're going to get 200 students, right? So he said, believe with me, everyone. Let's pray together. We'll get 200 students for our online Bible college. So very honestly, I couldn't believe it. I was like, 30 students? OK, 200 students? Uh, you know, like, honestly, I was like, how are you going to get 200 students? And that too from all over the world. So um, that was the target. And I think, you know, everyone believed in it. Uh, but literally, there were 200 plus students from 200 countries registered on our online Bible college in 2020. So a situation where we have to close off the on-campus badge. Now God has moved it global. So we had students from New Zealand, from Canada, from uh, you know so many nations in Africa. Um, uh, what what are the nations we had? We had um, yeah, I think uh, the U.S. Also some people registered Australia. Uh, so I mean the list just goes on. About 200 odd countries. How who can imagine? that you know, God can do exceedingly above um, more than you ask, think, or imagine. right? So that's how God works. According to your faith, if you can believe, all things are possible. And that was really a huge lesson for me because my faith, I was like, I actually couldn't believe. Uh, maybe because of the faith of uh, the others, uh, God has still done the miracle. And from that year onwards, like even right now, uh, we have... Um, at least 400 odd students registered both for e-learning as well as uh, uh, online batch. So though you know we we have uh, we don't see everyone together, th these same classes are being um, or these same classes are attended by around 400 students. Okay, on three different platforms. So anything is possible if you believe. God. And God can make a way for anything to happen. But it is according to your faith. And that's what Jesus was saying. So it's uh, always a good thing for us to check. Like I check myself. How big is my vision? How big is my dream? Sometimes we are the ones who are limiting God. God wants to do great things. But we tell him, it's too big for you, God. Let me help you. Okay. Just make it a little less. Then it's more believable for me. Right. But God is saying, I don't have any problem believing. You are the one who has a problem believing. I can do great and mighty things according to your faith. But how big is your faith? Right? How big is your dream? How big is your vision? That's a question that uh, you would need to ask yourself. For God, it, nothing is a problem. OK, let's move on. The next insight which we have here says, our will and desire are involved in the exercise of faith. So there are many times when Jesus said something like, he said um, uh, to the woman uh, who is a Canaanite in Matthew 15, Jesus said, oh woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. So there is a connection between desire and faith. So we say that when we have faith for something, there's got to be a strong desire. Okay? For example, a good example that I cannot forget is the testimony of uh, 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 Pastor Yonggi Cho. Many of you would have you know, read his uh, uh, books and uh, all that. But just to share you know, about uh, his ministry of how the church grew, so he shares in his books that when he started out his ministry, he got healed of tuberculosis. Uh, and that was a big miracle in his life that when he, um, you know, experienced that God can heal. And from that moment onwards, uh, God put a dream in his heart to build a large church in uh, South Korea. And he started out with something like three people. Okay. But in his heart, in his, in, his, in his mind's eyes, whenever he would pray, he would see thousands of people. Okay, So he was very passionate about it. 
so when his church had only about 3 people it seems he would preach like he is preaching to 300 people and uh, the the people sitting there three people his family members only they would be like you are shouting too much we can already hear you it's only three of us why are you shouting we can understand your message right but in his heart he was preaching for how many people maybe 300 3000 people the hall is empty there are only three people but he talks about how his desire was so strong okay and uh, for many days it was a small group and then slowly the church grew some 30 people uh, he had and he shares about how he used, those days they had a tent in which they would meet so he would pray he would go walk around the tent um pray hard pray in the spirit and believe god god told him okay now you believe for more numbers so god gave him another number something like 300 i don't know the exact numbers but something like 300 so he started praying and he started saying lord you have to now help this church grow to 300 so he would walk around and pray 300 god this is going to increase to 300 300 and then slowly what happened the church went from 30 to 300 right now uh, it's one of the largest churches in the world in seoul korea uh, it's called yoido full gospel church uh, and there is there are so many people in that church that uh, now you know they cannot even have one combined service because you cannot accommodate so many people in one hall or in one place so the i'm not uh, trying to promote any ministry i don't even know much about their ministry but the point i'm making is a man who had a vision from god and god said i will increase your ministry to thousands of people but there was a season when there were only three people right but what is the most important thing that he had at that time a strong desire a faith in god which said god can do it right even if i'm sure there must have been times when they didn't have enough money when they didn't have permissions when they didn't have people so many things could have gone wrong but when you carry on with the vision that god has put in your heart and you have a strong desire you say no god you said it it's going to happen i'm going to see it right so then what happens god wants that strong desire what did jesus tell that woman he said uh, you know great is your faith let it be to you as you desire so firstly i ask the question how big is your faith the second question is how much is your desire we tell god god i want to serve you how much do you really desire to serve god god i want to know you how much do you desire this much or you know a whole lot so it depends on our desire it's only when we have a strong desire that faith will work alongside that but when we don't carry the desire even god understands that he recognizes that hey actually yeah they're saying they want to serve me but yeah it's just like a small desire somewhere uh, it doesn't help much but we find that there is a role that desire plays right uh, along with faith so we can check our own hearts in our own lives and ask the question how much do, do we desire to know the word of god how much do we desire to go deeper in worship how much do we desire to know the things of the spirit how much do we desire to demonstrate the power of the holy spirit right how much do we desire to walk in purity to walk in holiness these are all things that will reflect in our life it will reflect in our ministry because god will work on the basis of our desire so when we say faith faith is associated with strong desire okay, we need to develop strong desire for the things that god wants us to do through our lives right maybe some of us here we may want to um, impact in the area of uh, i mean i heard many of your testimonies right the other day maybe in the area of music but do you have a strong desire that i need to make an impact you know throughout the nation or globally 
how strong is your desire or some of us we may want to uh, you know uh, establish be in the corporate world but be a testimony for christ how strong is your desire or we may want to establish many churches how strong is your desire god is asking us uh, to really check our faith and our desire and he will work on the basis of our desire okay um all right so let me just pause here for today and we'll pick up from page uh, 29 in the next week if there are any thoughts or any questions uh, we can deal with that now and then close with a word of prayer You know, sometimes we uh, say that uh, God is a good God. He will He will bless everyone. Let Him bless. You know, let Him make my church grow. We kind of put the responsibility on God, right? It will happen. God will do it. But whenever we say things like that, it's as if we are, um, you know forgetting about our responsibility of carrying faith and also the strong desire which god wants from us okay so uh, to say that yeah let let god do it god can do it god will do it and being very complacent uh, is not how jesus taught us about faith so if we are in that place where we say let god do anything if he blesses it's okay if he doesn't bless it's okay if he heals it's okay if he doesn't you know that's actually not the way god um jesus taught about faith he wanted us to be very uh, intentional or you may even use the term um quite specific about what what do you want me to do he wanted those answers from the people so uh, maintaining strong faith maintaining strong desire is important to see god working in our lives all right so if there are no more questions uh, can we please pray and uh, wrap up i want to request somebody from the online batch to lead us in prayer You just feel free anyone hello yes uh, uh, yes yes please go ahead okay. brother father god we just thank you for this uh, hour of study and we just pray that whatever you've taught us will help increase our faith not only for today but for the days to come lord uh, bless us lord in this uh, journey that we have taken with you and help us in every area of our lives where we have not uh, expressed our faith in accordance with thy word and thy will uh, we pray for a blessing upon the entire staff and all the students here lord and lead us lord today tomorrow and in the days to come thank you lord jesus amen 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 thank you uh thank you brother and thank you everyone god bless you uh yeah we'll close for today and uh, we'll get back into faith next yeah bye for now